Can you imagine a world without plastic? It's transformed our lives from revolutionizing travel and medicine down to the convenience of straws and water bottles. But now we're drowning in this stuff. And it wasn't always that way. Plastic was invented in the 19th century and only made it to our shelves in 1950. And while now we tend to associate plastic with something that's kind of destroying the planet, one of the reasons plastic was first invented was actually to save wildlife. Combs, piano keys, dressers, and billiard balls were all historically made out of ivory. But in the mid-1800s, panic spread after elephants faced extinction for the first time. That's my elephant sound. In 1867, a billiard company offered $10,000, a small fortune back in those days, to anyone that could come up with a substitute. And a few years later, a young inventor, John Wesley Hyatt, did just that. He didn't end up actually getting the prize money though, because his plastic was too soft for billiard balls. Anyways, he called it celluloid, and it was made from a polymer found in plants, and used for combs and photographic film. Soon after, the plastic revolution began. Plastic was made using leftover gases from petroleum production. This made it cheap, and companies boasted that they were actually saving the environment by not having to use scarce natural resources. It still wasn't available to ordinary people, but World War II changed everything. Plastic is credited with helping the Allies win the war. Think helmets and guns, mortar fuses, parachutes, and lighter aircraft. But after the end of the war, plastic companies needed a new market. That's right, there's nothing like saran wrap. It's the crystal clear plastic that lets you see everything you wrap. And suddenly, the average American household went from making do to embracing a disposable, single-use plastic culture. What? Look, here is the new Band-Aid plastic strip with new Super Stick. It sticks better than any other bandage. From plastic Band-Aids to plastic bottles, it meant we didn't have to wash cloth diapers. So you see, pampers are more absorbent. Result? Your baby stays comfortably dry. They're flushable. Or use heavy glassware. Tupperware freshness, that's our promise. Look at all the ways we keep it. Or throw garbage straight into the metal trash can. But as we produced more and more plastic, we started to kind of choke on it. Sometime around the 70s, the world realized that some plastics might be killing us, and we didn't really have a place to dispose of the rest of it. Cue the music, Recycle Rack. You're not gonna use any of that, I know. Since 1950, we've manufactured 8.3 billion tons of plastic. To give you an idea, that's roughly equal to the weight of 822,000 Eiffel Towers, or 80 million blue whales, or 1 billion T-Rexes! Sorry. 6.3 billion tons of that has ended up as waste, and 91% of that has never been recycled. It's just sitting in landfills or in the ocean and killing hundreds of marine animals every year. But why doesn't it decompose quickly? For a very boring reason involving strong carbon bonds, which don't break down easily. But what that boring reason means is that plastics can take hundreds of years to decompose, and even when they break down into smaller pieces, they can hang around for centuries more. We even did this video on how microplastics have invaded everything, including your poop. So what now? Well, it's hard to avoid using plastic in healthcare, construction, industrial machinery, and transportation. But this is not actually where most of the world's plastic trash comes from. Almost half of it actually comes from packaging materials. You know, it's the stuff we throw away in less than six months. In all likelihood, many of our great-grandparents never knew what plastic even was. And now trends tell us by 2050, there may be more plastic in the ocean than fish. But can we throw out our throwaway culture? Some of your favorite sounds brought to you by Plastic.